What's your favorite anime ever? Um, I talked about this in one of my panels. I'm terrible at absolutes. Um, so if you ask me for a favorite, you're gonna get like seven. Okay, top three. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, top seven. Yeah, top seven. Um, top one hundred. Not necessarily one that you've been in, but right? just in general. In general. Oh, oh man. But none. That's hard. See, now I'm trying to narrow it down. To the, I'm just gonna like work. Okay, uh, Hajime no Ippo, Gundam Wing, Outlaw Star, Cowboy Bebop. Uh, I'm gonna stop at four because I want to say like I, I just thought ten more, so those are the ones I'm gonna say. I'll, I'll, I'll write off Bebop. I'll connect to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of the that was one of the first ones I ever saw. The first one, the first series I ever saw, and and the, I have a love of uh, music and classic rock as well. And when I came to realize what the score of that show was, plus the titles of the episodes yeah. and how closely linked they are to music that I was getting into uh, simultaneously, so I, I felt like I was being exposed to more than one form of art at the time while watching that. All Miyazaki, uh, all of it. Well, Ooh. Miyazaki. <laughs> so you're a DJ. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I like uh, Akira, like everybody else. Um, Vampire Hunter D. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know what that was, was but you got it. I was fine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, I loved it. But, um, and then, as far as anime I've, I've done that I really like, because honestly, that's really how I'm exposed to most anime is by performing in it. Um, I really like uh, From the New World. I can't stop talking about it. I did it like two years ago, and I just can't stop talking about it. So, um, yeah. That's it. I keep spiking the camera. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> We'll fix it in post. Good, good. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's all going to be just you yeah, making eye contact with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the yeah, same, but I, I got started too. with, uh, I loved watching Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, of course, like, for a guy like Dragon Ball Z, I mean, I, I, I was obsessed with that growing up, and it was just nuts now that I'm working for Funimation. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, and then, uh, even though it was, like, the first big show I was on, if I always say if I wasn't in it, I just love watching it because of the source material uh, Samurai 7 based off of you know uh, Seven Samurai and it's like yeah it's a classic story they've re told it and remade it so many times into so many different uh, versions uh, but I, I just really enjoy like the acting the, and just getting to work on it it's just like icing on the cake for that one so uh, and recently I haven't really gotten into anything else I haven't wa had time to watch a lot but I hear I really want to watch uh, One Punch Man. One Punch Man. I hear that that one's amazing, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. there. So there's something I want to watch, if anyone wants to hang out. I have two questions. One of them is serious, one of them is not so much. First question is, what would you advise to somebody who wants to get into voice acting? Luck. Um, <laughs> Luck and rich parents. <laughs> and I would say train as an actor. In ge like, yeah. go to yeah. theater school. Um, is there anything specific that the studios look for, or is it just... Skill, skill. Yeah. It's really being able to come in and make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, I think that outside of that uh, level of professionalism, showing up and being someone that they could picture working with comfortably. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to say that you, you need to have preparation meet opportunity, and you can't control the opportunity, but you can control the preparation. So get out there and make sure that your skills are enough. Look at the people in leads in whatever medium it is that you want to go into and make sure that your skills are competitive um, because otherwise, train harder. Okay. Yeah. yeah, based on what Emily said, uh, uh, go to, if you go to theater school, you'll, you'll learn how to uh, generate art within yourself as mm -hmm. opposed to uh, sort of reverse engineering what you've been watching, right. you know what I mean? Like the number of, uh, if you've heard anybody say, I watch a lot of anime and therefore I bet I could do it, there's a huge gap uh, to cross before you get to that point. Um, if you can just do an impersonation of something else that you've heard, that's not the same thing as an artist creating a thing. And uh, getting the professional training uh, as, as an actor in general, um, and then technical training when it comes to how to manipulate the voice and microphone technique and those sorts of things. When you combine those, then you can create something new, uh, which is more likely to help you get cast once you're finding places to audition. And the second question is, um, if you guys were in a Harry Potter house, which one would it be? Ravenclaw for life! Gryffindor. <laughs> I 
actually I took the test. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have my Ravenclaw PJ pants upstairs. Yeah, you were wearing them last night. I was wearing them last night, and you know, my husband he got them for me for Christmas, and he said maybe my favorite thing that he's ever said to me, and he like proposed to me and drunk. Um, but he gave them to me, and I got really excited. And he came up to me after because it was like big family thing, and he was like. I hope you like your raven claw pants, even though they have a raven and not an eagle. And I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one. You get it. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, I enjoy the uh, tenants of Ravenclaw. I do like knowledge over it, like preparing. So for me, it would be like a Hermione mindset. Because I don't know, Gryffindor, it's like, oh, they're courageous and all that. And I'd be like, no, I'd be the guy in the back. Like, if everyone was running forward, I'd be like, I'm going to prepare. And I'll, like, do defense spells for everyone. I'll be in the back, like, protecting everyone. So pro I'd probably be in Ravenclaw, if anything. I have no idea. <laughs> that makes you a Slytherin. No. <laughs> there you go. Or a Hufflepuff. You are so a Hufflepuff. all the rest. So much. Oh, oh, I mean, ever, like, well, I mean, there's, there's, the, super happy about it. <laughs> they're having, so, still, they're having their own there. There. Um, <laughs> There's a difference between, like, um, uh, something that I would love to be a part of because I love what that story was, and something I would love to be a part of because, man, they got some paydays. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and those are not necessarily the same. No, but, uh, the same thing. Um, what I would what I would love to have done was uh, uh, Triga is an early one that comes to mind uh, because that played absolutely in uh, from a technical perspective um, what sort of voices can you make and how uh, how far uh, dynamically can you go um, what is the overall emo emotional core to that story where it starts off really goofy and zany and you know I was once dating somebody I tried to get her to watch it she's okay I'll watch one I went but I didn't know that rule when we were going in she's gonna watch one episode and then determine whether or not she wanted to watch the rest of the series based on that and because that's such a, a tonal shift from beginning to end uh, I, I wish I hadn't done that but I appreciate over the arc of that show um, that it there really is a a depth and a purpose and a, and a higher mindedness to it that I would love to have been a part of. And so that's, there's your double whammy of incredibly popular, so yeah, keep the roof <laughs> over my head and the cat fed uh, and, and artistic satisfaction at the same time. It's, it's hard whenever I think of that question, if there's a role that I would have liked to have done, it's like, well, I like that role because of who I've seen do it. So it's like, I wouldn't want to take that away from someone where it's like, one of my favorite characters that I used to, to love to watch was, uh, it was it was called Hercule, but it's Mr. Satan from Dragon Ball Z, just because he's so outlandish and I love Chris Rager's portrayal of him, but it's like, I couldn't do that voice, I can't, it makes my throat bleed. Like, and he can do it effortlessly, and it's awesome, and it's like, I just like the way he's written. Or like, uh, you know, some of my favorite characters, I'm like, I wouldn't want to do that, so... If I look at something that's out, I know there's a few that are kind of there, um, but I know that like in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, they brought Phoenix Wright out, and I'm like, oh, I really like Phoenix Wright, like, I'd love to voice him, because there's someone who's doing his voice already, but they don't have the anime out yet, so it's like, oh, like, I'd like to audition for that, but then if I didn't get cast, I'd be like, can I just be in it now, like, I just want to be in a show? Uh, so that one's always hard because it's like, well, every role I've gotten, I'm very thankful that it's like, mm -hmm. awesome, like I got to do that or at least be a part of it. Um, I would like to get a character that has a lot of uh, toys out, though. I would love to walk yeah. around and be like, me, it's me, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I have toys, yeah. So you I, puppeteer at the booth. And yeah, I'm just, <laughs> play, I'm just, gonna, yeah, just play with <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. I don't need to go to a convention. How about you two? Um, I I was saying uh, in some of the panels earlier that I am kind of like a, a hippy dippy actor type. Um, so for me, it's hard to think about like wanting to have been in a show because I kind of feel like roles find who they're supposed to find, um, and that it. If I was supposed to have been cast as something, it would have happened. Um, and I, it's probably a self-defense mechanism because rejection's hard, y'all. But, uh, <laughs> but I tell myself it's because I'm at one with, with the universe. Um, but if 
if I had, uh, like, if there were suddenly a reboot tomorrow, I totally, I don't care that he's a dude. I'd be doing Maxwell from Gundam Wing. Oops. It would happen. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your face got me. Oh, pick me. I would have really liked to have been in the reboot of Vampire Hunter D. I said that earlier. I wasn't. They didn't ask me, but whatever, Aww. man. <laughs> so, I'm not better. Whatever, man. Carving it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. That's all I'm comfortable saying uh, when I'm being recorded. So. <laughs> Go ahead. So say you do the whole acting school and everything, and Funimation hires you. Mm -hmm. What do you start out as, and how do you, quote unquote, build up in the company, and do they do pay raises, and how do they do that, or decide that? <laughs> Walla. You start with Walla. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's just, like, background uh, talking. And... Yeah, it's, it's groups, they'll bring in, you know, uh, three or four, four people, yeah, three or yeah. four people into a group and say, okay, and sometimes they'll give you, like, if you're in those wallet groups, they'll say, oh, there's guard B who mm -hmm. has two lines, and so you have to say, halt, and then you get shot. <laughs> so it's like, oh, okay. So you'll get these these little bits, and then maybe after that, they'll say, oh, um, there's this guy who has four or five lines. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, you know what, we have auditions, you have a pretty good voice, uh, try that, and then you might get something that's, oh, he's an episodic. Uh, character, or they're, they're an episodic character, or they're throughout the show, but in certain parts, or hey, you got this lead, or hey, you got this, uh, you know, co-lead. So it all really depends on the quality of what you're doing, which is uh, going back to when you're asking, you know, what's it take when you're going into this field? Being yourself and showing what you can do. How um, Mark was saying, yeah, we don't do impression, like don't come out and be like, I do a very good Vegeta. It's like, yeah, we have the original, like we have him. <laughs> yeah, he can do his own very good Vegeta. Yeah, we have him. It's like, yeah, we don't need that. So going in there and saying like, oh, I can do this and this is me and having a really nice quality to your voice. Um, I got a very nice compliment, uh, which for me it's odd because you have to be very self-aware of how you sound. And they're like, no one, th there was some pickups that they needed to get from me. And they were like, oh, well, we'll send in some, someone else to maybe voice match or do something real quickly since they're out of town. Who do you need? They go, well, they're pickups for Anthony. And they go, oh, we can't do that because he has a deep voice but a nasal voice. So I'm deep and nasal, which a lot of people, it's either like very deep and bassy. But when I start doing my acting, I use like every part. So they're like, oh, it's very hard to voice match that. So just having your natural yeah, quality. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I got job security, mofo. <laughs> <laughs> no. But it's it's deep and nasal. How do you do that? <laughs> I do. Right? Yeah, yeah you don't know until you hear it. And it's like, oh yeah, he now is. You said that. He's yeah, annoyingly that's sick. That should be. Yeah, it's, it's not possible. <laughs> I guess because I don't speak proper. I could speak here. I could go my Sabbath voice. So starting out, you kind of have to have like a backup plan while doing what little snippets you can do. Absolutely. Even once you're uh, established, i got to do obnoxious air quotes for that, because <laughs> you, you never know. It is freelance work. It's creative work. Um, paradigms shift. Things go in and out of fashion. Uh, life happens. So you can't count on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know of a person associated with anime who doesn't have some sort of other job. Uh, nobody is making a living just on anime voice acting. Um, and I mean, there are people who are making livings as voice actors as a whole, or actors as a whole, um, or actor directors, but there's nobody who's just like, I, you know, cash those One Piece checks, you know, pay my mortgage. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you definitely have to have other support. Uh, in your life to, to make it happen and not starve to death. <laughs> or go crazy. Yeah. Or that's another thing is that uh, if you only focus on one little area, you start really going a little, ca you get cabin fever yeah. career-wise thinking of like, just you know everything that's going on and why am I not in this, why am yep. I not in this, why didn't I get that? And it drives you bonkers. So you need to branch out and have, you know, different irons in the fire for your own mental and creative health. <laughs> Sir, I've been told that I have a rather unique voice, and I have been told I should do voiceover work, but I've never really tried to pursue it. If I wanted to pursue it and get exposed to those bit parts where I'd say, oh, and then get shot or whatever, <laughs> um, what would be the best avenue for me to pursue that, recognizing I still have a day job, and I'm interested, and I'm going to still live in this general geographic area? Uh this area being this area? PC. I live uh, in Arlington. Yeah. I mean... But I have technology. I can do good recordings at home. Right. Um, so 
the thing is with that, uh, you couldn't do anime specifically. Um, we don't do remote uh, recordings except in very specific circumstances just because of having to match video to audio. Sure. Um, but, I mean, getting, getting training is still important. Uh, the accessibility is out there to create your own home studio. And there are tons of independent projects on the internet. Um, you can look, uh, Voice Acting Alliance is a good sort of beginner place to start and then branch out mm -hmm. from there. Voice Acting Alliance. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and they'll even, uh, if you want, just for experience, they, they do like unpaid projects and stuff to where uh, they're a little less stringent. It's a little sort of softer lead into it. Um, but in that case, it would be about making sure that your home studio setup was comparable to the quality that is in finished products. Um, so just making sure that you're on the cutting edge of competition. Understood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of questions, but uh, <laughs> what, what, what percentage of your time would you say you're dealing with auditioning and looking for the next uh, spot versus actually dealing with the craft itself? business versus the craft? It really all depends. It varies, yeah. Um, it's, it's sort of, uh, I like to think of it as, as waves in the ocean, yeah. you know. Sometimes you're drowning in work and sometimes you're washed ashore. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, you, and that's, you have to really plan your life around that. <laughs> Be good at saving kids. Yeah. <laughs> with, well, with multiple cities, I'm kind of curious also because uh, you mentioned uh, working in several different locations, mm -hmm. uh, union, non-union, uh, how do you deal with that as a voice actor and having all other different things that you're working on in areas of theater and publication? There's, um, well, to, to answer <laughs> the first part of your state. question, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, you know, auditioning and preparing versus working, mm -hmm. every job is not the job. Mm -hmm. The job is the audition for the next job, mm -hmm. right? Once I've got it, if, you've, if you're constantly working on how to get the next thing, then you know what you're doing. Like if I, uh, I, I used to go into incredible ennui every time I would finish a gig uh, if I didn't have the next one lined up until I started the mentality of this is all about the next thing. Always be working towards getting that next job, making the next connection, throwing out the next audition. Um, that's a constant struggle because there can be, I mean, I got for six weeks Last year, I did a gig that took care of six months of my monthly bills. Um, but it's also possible that I don't work for six months at a time because that happened uh, the previous year. So I have to look at it like I could either buy a car or I could make sure I can still afford groceries in April <laughs> because I, I might need this paycheck to cover that. Uh, simply because, like they said, it comes and goes. Um, and, and sometimes in, in, in other acting work, I can get a phone call tomorrow for a gig that shoots next week that will pay a month's bills. Mm. Or I could not be called at all months at a time. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always about how do I continue to get the next job? Uh, who do I need to be contacting? How do I need to be moving? What did I do today? What one thing did I do today that will help me get the next gig, whatever it is? Uh, in terms of union work or not, um, and the, you know this will this will vary by state and by market. Yeah. Um, but so far as Chicago is concerned, there's Equity, which is live performance on stage union, and there's SAG-AFTRA, which is anytime you're being recorded for any reason. Um, and I just realized I'm being recorded, so let's have a conversation. <laughs> with it, make sure I'm not breaking the rules. <laughs> um, there's uh, there are different tiered projects. Um, being a part of a union is a matter of being protected and making sure you're getting paid what you're worth. But uh, just a little over a year ago, I got into the union and all of the work that I was doing that got me there was the sort of work that I'm not allowed to do unless I'm working under contract. So SAG-AFTRA has worked out uh, a tiered system of contracts so that if it's a small enough project, I'm permitted to negotiate my payment below a minimum so that I can still get extra work. I'm permitted to defer my payment so that you will pay me only in the event that this thing happens. Uh, because otherwise, if it weren't for that, uh, I wouldn't be able to work at all. Like, there's, there's a hard line in the sand where I used to be able to shoot this YouTube video for free, and now I'm required a minimum of $254.12 mm -hmm. per eight hours. And that's just the, the liquid yeah. part of the payment, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, 
you're you are rarely in a position where you're going to be required to join the union. Um, if you do it, it raises a new set of problems. Uh, but there's always somebody who's walked that path before you and can answer those questions for what it's like being where you are on that path. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you.